Hello and welcome to this time lapse where we've got these pink geraniums. I used the photo reference from Alona E. Stefan. And I am working on the sanded paper here by Lux Archival. The size is 8 by 10 inches. And this is my second time working on this paper. And I wanted to see if I was able to get the same amount of detail as what I can with pastel mat. So that was my intention with this piece. I would have to say I am happy with the finished result. I don't feel I can get as much detail as what I can with pastel mat. But that may be because I need to actually practice more on this paper. Like I said, I've only used it twice. I mounted it with some photo mount that is pH neutral, so acid free, onto some archival foam core and I just used the photo mount. Sprayed it on the foam core and stuck the two together. Easy peasy. So starting in with the background, as you can see, I've put in a very loose initial sketch just so I could get the placement of each of the bunches of flowers of the geraniums. In the background, I used a mixture of Art Spectrum Extra Soft from the Skin Tone set. I absolutely love the colors um, in that set. They, as you can see, you've got some beautiful mauves in there, like almost like gray mauvey pinks. And that was perfect for this background. Going in, starting with the darkest part, which is the leaves that are in the shadow. And I'm using my Sennelier 179, as well as a mixture of um, pastel pencils and pastel sticks. Greeny blues, um, yellow greens, just to try and get the same effect of light and shadow. As you can see, the lighting is very dramatic in this um, photograph, which is what I loved. And one of the things I absolutely adore about her work. Um, so I'm going to have lots of contrasting darks and lights in there. So that they contrast. I'm just showing here a little bit of Diane Townsend. The fluorescence. I've actually been using these quite a bit lately. Because the colours, the, because they're so fluorescent, it translates well to sunlight. Sunlight shining through this translucent petal. Um, bringing out these fluorescent colors so really really useful as well as a mixture of um, Jack Richardson the vibrant set which isn't that vibrant compared to some other pastels I have the most vibrant I would say that I have as a collection is Sennelier they're amazing so I'm using a lot of Sennelier in these petals as well um, some Helios red that's an incredible um, set of um, pastels that Sennelier do as well as Carmine um, and anyway just using a mixture obviously you've got to have some dark in there so some dark reds dark pinks even some orange um, for those darker parts of the petal um, petals I should say and then those fluorescents for the really light parts so moving on to um, the top flower I'm uh, putting in those little darks, the actual center of the flower with just some dark green and then going making because this so in the photo reference there is a lot of luminosity on this particular bunch of geraniums. So I just went straight in with the fluorescence Diane Townsend and then darkened up a little bit with some um, of the Sennelier and then this is the orange from the fluorescent Diane Townsend. So like I said, the Diane Townsend, which I don't use predominantly over all the works I've done that much, I I have been reaching for them when I do have this intense light in a petal. Um, and this is that was a little Jack Richardson, kind of like a magenta -y pink. But the important thing in here for this particular piece is getting that beautiful glow. Okay, so looking at the colors that are going to glow. So orangey reds, orangey pinks, and then the fluorescence, as well as white for those lightest parts um, of the petals. And just really looking to see the shapes. Where are the darks sitting? Where the sort of mid-tones and where are the light sitting? And creating the form that way. And by the end, when you stand back, you go, oh yeah, that looks like a geranium. 
I'm constantly, constantly looking um, at my photo reference to see where I need to place the colors that I need to place. And then also just using the pastel pencils, they go on the surface brilliantly. Um, strangely, well not so strangely, but um, every painting that I come across, there's always a struggle somewhere. And I was surprised that these leaves I found really tricky. I have painted a geranium before and I don't remember struggling, struggling with the leaves. But in this particular piece on this particular day, I was like, oh my gosh, my shapes were wrong. So I wasn't observing as well as I should have been um, the shapes that I was creating. So you'll see I go back a few times and I try and correct because I can just see things are wrong. And I go back over several times going with my darks, put in the veins so I can just see for the shaping, put in some lighter tones, put in a bit of the background to correct the shape. Um, of the actual leaves, so doing some negative painting. Um, these leaves, yeah, they, they gave me a little bit of a, a hard time. So um, when I started out with pastels, people were always like, oh, it's amazing, your work doesn't look muddy at all. People seem to uh, think that working with pastels, you can create mud quite easily. And because I predominantly worked with pastel mat or velour, I didn't find that at all because those papers really grip the pastel pigment. Working on sanded paper, I understand more now. Um, once you have a few layers of pastel on sanded paper, it really becomes quite slippy and the colors do definitely mix a lot more, I find, than on the pastel mat. Um, so there is a tendency to create mud. On sanded paper so I can get layers in here as you can see um, but I would say not as many as pastel mat in term because then I don't know how to do that without creating mud <laughs> so maybe there's a special way I mean still if I could once I finished this piece I could still come in with more pigment and the paper would would take it but it would just look like mud so yes so you have to be careful on the sanded papers because you definitely don't want your colors to look like mud so as you can see going in fixing the shape of that leaf just wasn't right um continuing to have a look at my reference photograph and making any adjustments that i needed to make so the whole shape was completely wrong it was too small so i made it bigger um, and then just using the pastel pencils to make those changes first before I come in with the pastel sticks. So also using a mixture of greens. So we've got yellow greens, blue greens in there, um, and mostly from Sennelier. I find Sennelier's greens are just gorgeous. I absolutely love them, as well as Blue Earth pastel greens. So doing a, quite a bit of um, negative painting in there. As you can see, I had the Art Spectrum Big Square pastel filling in the background. Sorry, oh, I feel like I have a frog in my throat. But just continuing with these leaves, building them up, putting my darks, my midtones, and my lights. For my lights um, in the leaves, I actually used like a turquoise, and that is an um, Jack Richardson from the Vibrant set. As well as, this is a fluorescent green that I'm using from Diane Townsend. And then using my pastel pencils. This is chromium green from Karen Dash. And um, also a mixture of their very dark green that I can't pronounce. I don't know how to say the name. And I'm not going to attempt to say the name. Um, and just putting those veins in. Which are so, uh, so much of a characteristic of, you know, geraniums. Is these like wiggly woggly edges with um, the veins it's just so typically a geranium leaf so uh, this is the art spectrum extra soft highlight and it's the green highlight so it's white with a slight tint of green and that is now the lightest part of the leaf just looking back now like I just want to change that leaf that's glaring at us I'm like, that's awful, can't stand it. Anyway, 
So the last geranium, as you can see, is in shadow and the colours are far more magenta -y rather than that hot coral pink colour. So I'm adding lots of colours that are pink and magenta based. Also from Sennelier, as well as um, bringing in some of that hot red from the Dying Towns in fluores Fluorescent. That leaf, yeah, I was just not happy with that leaf. It's just the 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 shadow just wasn't working for me. I, I wasn't able to capture that shadow. If you look on the reference photograph, you can see the light is mainly, I mean, the leaf is mainly in light, except for a few shadowy bits. And oh, just wasn't working. So, you know, I just, um, I just didn't do it as much in shadow as what the reference photo said. I just couldn't get it. Sometimes that happens. So if you've enjoyed me rattling on, then please do consider subscribing here on YouTube. Or if you want some real full-time demos, um, you can check me out on Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye for now.